Well, after a long wait, it's finally here. Toyota's first completely battery electric powered car, the BZ4X. But have they got the formula right? Let's find out. You're tuned to Four Wheels in a Seat. My name's Alex Dalrymple, and this is my channel where I review new cars every week for people who might not be car experts and could do without the jargon. If you enjoy the video, please do give me a like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss a review as well as the notification bell. The BZ4X first appeared overseas a couple of years ago. It's taken a while to find its way down the yellow brick road to the land of Oz, but it is finally here. Toyota, of course, have copped a bit of flack in recent years for not wanting to commit to battery electric vehicles, preferring instead to stick with their tried and tested hybrid cars. And that's actually worked out quite well for them. But they heard the call and have given us this, which I think is actually one of the best EVs around. From the outside, the BZ4X kind of looks like a cross between the CHR and the RAV4, and you know what, it actually sits size-wise somewhere in between the two. I like what they've done with the design, especially up here at the front. The headlight treatment looks really, really good. These are not panel gaps, by the way. They're actually a design feature, but it would be kind of cool though if these flaps kind of flipped upwards in a 1980s kind of way, but no, it doesn't happen, unfortunately. I like what they've done with the front nose here. It is a little bit Tesla-ish, but I like the black line across here, and yeah, it's a good design. The BZ4X, and I hate that name, it just does not roll off the tongue easily, and I keep on thinking of a different type of 4X. It's the only way I can remember its name. Um, it rides up reasonably high, gives you a good amount of ground clearance. The only thing I don't really like from a design point of view is this grey plastic around the wheel arches and extends along the bottom there. It just looks a little bit cheap, which this car is not, but more on that in a minute. Also, I really like the little Bev sign here. I wonder if there's many people out there who own one of these and their name is Bev and they know that this is their car because it's Bev's car. Uh, that's also where you plug in to charge, by the way. The rear design does remind me a little bit of the MG4 just with the rear spoiler and the overall shape plus the full width red LED across the back here. Powered tailgate, not a huge storage space, just 410 litres here in the all-wheel drive version. Uh, the front-wheel drive version only does come with about 20 additional litres of storage space. Rear seats can also, of course, be folded down for more room. This particular example of the BZ4X is a twin electric motor version, giving it all-wheel drive. Two electric motors, one on the front, one on the rear, and together they output 160 kilowatts of power and 337 newton meters of torque. And you can charge to 80% at a high-speed charger in about 30 minutes. The interior of the BZ4X is pretty much unlike any other Toyota I've ever seen. It's a really interesting mix of materials and good design, but it's not without its quirks though. Um, most interesting of which is the lack of a glove box. There's just nothing here at all. Instead, we get a dual level center console bin with a removable tray that uh, does give you an adequate amount of space, but probably not quite as big as a glove box. The center console screen is nice and big, 12 inch good sharp picture the software on it is the latest from Toyota and it's not the best but it's still pretty good there's AM FM and digital radio native navigation plus wireless Apple CarPlay the image from the reversing cameras and the camera at the front plus the top-down 360 degree view for parking um, all looks really really good this top spec all-wheel drive model gets a nine speaker JBL sound system as well. Climate controls run off this touch sensitive pad just underneath that. We've got a few little rocker switches here plus manual volume controls for the sound system just up on top of that. Air vents with a big power button there. I really like the location of that. It's just very easy to use. The lower console is pretty good too, despite a huge amount of piano black, which has got dirty fingerprints all over it. The gear shifter, again, a little bit different to anything I've seen before, but I really like it and it's really, really easy and intuitive to use. Drive mode controls here, plus the regenerative braking and uh, brake hold buttons here, which I find myself switching on for every trip. I like what they've done here with the wireless phone charging. It's underneath this cool lid, which has a nice pattern underneath it, and your phone just uh, charges in there, and because it's in its own little enclosed space, it um, 
always seems to charge really well, which is a bit of a problem with iPhones because of the uh, cameras sticking out of the back. Often they don't make proper contact with the charging surface, but this car seems to be pretty good with that. The only thing I wish that this would do is light up because I think that would look really cool. Cup holders here, the armrest slides backwards and forwards. Um, in front of the driver, there's no head up display, but because the instrument cluster is set up so high, you don't really need one. And I actually quite like this design. It works well for me. I have heard of some people who are struggling to see the instrument cluster beyond the steering wheel, just because it's uh, kind of in line with it. But for me, in my sitting position, I don't really have any issues with visibility at all. Um, it's a small screen, it's only seven inches. Uh, not a lot of customization available on that, but it does everything you need. I like what they've done here with the design, in fact, around the steering column. It's kind of retro futuristic and looks a bit kind of 1980s, which I quite like. Um, the steering wheel, same story again. It looks like something out of an arcade game, you know, like you, when you might have been playing Star Wars at the Hoyt Center in Sydney. That's something for the older members of the uh, audience who might remember that. Um, but the controls here, um, there are quite a few buttons, but it's pretty easy to use. Um, they could have simplified it a little bit perhaps, but I, I like the design. The steering wheel does sit quite low though, and um, again, going hand in hand with the high instrument cluster and the low wheel, um, look, it's probably not quite as high as I would like it to be, but it's it's fine. It's not really, um, you know, problematic to use or anything like that. The seats are leather, they are heated and ventilated. The driver has full electric adjustment with lumbar support, manual only for the front passenger. The back of the BZ4X is really comfortable actually, although the rear seat here is just a little bit low for me. So my legs aren't really supported, they're kind of sticking up, but in terms of leg room, my knees nowhere near the seat in front, and this is my own driving position. I'm 190 centimeters tall, so yeah, really comfortable. Two USB-C ports there, air vents, three adults would be fine on a shorter trip. Kids here in the back on a longer road trip would be just fine. Um, nice view through the panoramic sunroof. There's some nice plush feeling black carpet here, which does show up every little bit of dirt, but it feels a little bit expensive. Armrest with cup holders, a little bit of additional storage space, so. Yeah, I think rear seat passengers would be pretty comfortable back here in the BZ4X. On the road and it drives exactly how you would expect an electric Toyota to drive, which is really good and really smooth and feels really composed. It's like when you drive a hybrid Camry or a CHR or a RAV4 in electric mode. It actually just feels exactly like that, except that there's no petrol engine so its performance is actually really sort of predictable in that way it's not crazy fast like a tesla model 3 performance or a dual motored polestar 2 but it is really zippy i mean zero to 100 in about six and a half seconds is not exactly slow i really like this textured material here they've got on the dashboard it's not exactly soft but it looks like it could be there's an interesting feature here with the uh, seat heating and ventilation as well as the steering wheel heating and that is the ability for them to be on auto and the car decides when to turn them on. I mean, how does it know? At the moment it's got the seat ventilation on one, which is fine, feels nice. Of course, before I did mention that there is no glove box and not a huge amount of room in the center console bin, there is like a lot of EVs, um, a lot of storage here underneath the floating console here in the center, in addition to two more USB-C ports and a 12 volt outlet. So cabin storage is actually pretty good. So for a first attempt at a battery powered EV, I think Toyota have actually done an outstanding job. They obviously had a look at what Mazda did with the MX-30 and decided to do almost the exact opposite because that car got an awful lot wrong and has actually now been discontinued. Compared to the Polestar 2 I was driving last week, the noise in the cabin here is a little more pronounced. There is a bit more of it. It's not overly noisy, I mean, you know, it, it's really splitting hairs here. It's just fractionally more noisy than the Polestar. And even that could just come down to the type of tires. Down here on the lower console, there's the X mode drive button, which gives you access to a few different drive modes. And they change the way that torque is delivered to all four wheels, helping you in tricky conditions like snow, mud, sand, wet grass, that kind of thing. And then there's also the all important eco button, 
which allows the car to run a little bit more economically, but of course takes the edge off some of the performance. Unlike some other EVs I've driven, the steering feel in this car is really good. It's not too light, not too heavy, it's just right in the middle. The regenerative braking mode where the car draws a bit of extra energy from the engine braking as you slow down is a bit light in this car. It only has one setting that I can find and it doesn't really allow for one pedal driving. So you will still need to use the brake a bit, which is a bit of a shame because I think one pedal driving is the way of the future. As someone who reviews cars, the question I hear time and again is about the range of an EV. Now, it's becoming a well-known fact that most people generally overestimate the distance they drive in their cars every day. The average is about 30 kilometres a day if you're commuting to and from work. The BZ4X has a range of 485 kilometres on a full charge. So with that in mind, you're probably not really going to need to charge the car more than once every seven to 10 days. The ride from the suspension probably goes a little towards the firmer side. It's not the softest rider around. That's not to say that it's harsh or uncomfortable. It is just noticeably firmer than some other SUVs I've driven lately. Is the BZ4X, I was gonna say B, I keep wanting to say BZ4K because I just keep on thinking of ultra HD TVs. The BZ4X, is it a turn back car? A car so good looking you have to turn back and look at it after you've parked it? Yeah, I think it is. It's pretty distinctive and I've noticed it has had a few sideways looks, even if that's only because you don't really see many of these on the road yet. But it's a good looking car. Now I'm keen to try out this car's automatic parking feature. In my experience, these systems, while labour saving, are much slower than just doing it yourself. and. <laughs> Also, in some ways, a little bit more stressful because I always worry that it, the car's not going to break in time or run into the footpath or scrape its wheels on the edge of the curb. I've had all of those things happen to me before when I've been testing out this feature in various cars. So let's see how we go in the BZ4X. Release the brake. Okay. So we're going in forward. No, we're going go in backwards. The car is running the show right now. Now let's put it into reverse. And <laughs> we're getting very close to the curb there. Uh, ooh, that is close to the curb and close to the car behind us, but no contact. Okay, wheel spinning, going forward a little bit. Done. Advanced park finished. Well, that, that was an advanced maneuver. Well done, BZ4X. The BZ4X has received a bit of a mixed reception from some reviewers, and I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's really, really good. And I mean, it would have been easy for Toyota just to slap an electric powertrain in a RAV4 or a CHR and call it a day. But instead, they've given us a brand new platform, and I really like it. I think it's really good. The one thing that's not so good though is the price. It's about $10,000 too expensive in my opinion. But I think if you hold your breath, give it about six to 12 months, you might find it might come down just a little bit as EV prices are dropping across the board. So if you're in the market for an electric SUV, definitely consider taking one of these for a test drive.